Team Fouch is splitting up today. I'm taking the girls to pick up some friends for a play date, and uh, Milo's going with his dad. They are getting some gas for us, and they are getting rid of some trash. It takes a lot of juice to start a truck like what I have. My battery's not great, so when it gets cold, uh, it's not the easiest thing to do. Uh, but we got it going. We got some experience with 12 volt batteries. So we got it done. We didn't start the cars at all yesterday, which is not ideal in weather like this. It's good to start. If you have kind of old cars in cold weather, it's good to start them every day. So my car didn't have any trouble starting up, but I had my doors frozen. We're going to have friends over. Yahoo! Look at that, it's fouch in Molly Green Magazine. Look at this. The cat's on our chicken house. <laughs> There's Nick. Nick has an article in the winter issue. Can I see the front? The winter issue of Molly Green Magazine. Ta-da! <laughs> and the yurt in its current condition. So we're still not using the yurt as a workshop. Thank you all for suggesting it. Um, I'm, I'm okay without a workshop right now. We're trying to make it a happy kid space um, so that we have an alternate space for, for children and their friends and everything, um, and just another place to go. So we're trying to get all the books on shelves. You see, they need a place to go. We kind of moved out without moving out. Um, we just took what we wanted and ran. Uh, and now it's time to make sense of it. Well, I didn't get through it, but we have to go up and make dinner. I gave it my best shot. People have been asking what we miss about the yurt. There's really only one thing that I miss about the yurt, and that's being close to my animals. Down here, we kind of lived in the barnyard, and from the house, we have to go and visit the barnyard. So that is a loss. Other than that, but maybe that's because our house has just as much character and personality as the yurt ever did. So I made these sliding doors for our bathroom because it seemed like the most space-saving way to get in and out of this tiny uh, little bathroom. So um, here are our sliding doors. The candle's temporary. The candle is a permanent fixture <laughs> from my youth. It will now be shellacked on there. For time. So some of you were asking for further explanation on the how the two doors move together. You'll notice I move one door and the other door comes right towards me. It's not very complicated. So uh, the, the way that that works is these pulleys at the end have nothing to do with the the door actually tracking. Okay, so there's a pulley at either end, and there's a loop of cable that goes around them. So it's, it's what in, in theater curtains uh, would be called an endless, because it's a continuous loop and tensioned. So there's a turnbuckle in it, and that's just bringing the two ends of the cable closer together so that this, this cable loop is tight. 
Okay. Yeah, that's a different note. But these are the same. <clears throat> so, what's happening is, as this door moves, it's moving the cable because I have it clamped to the cable with that little bolt right there. So this door is clamped to the front side of the loop. This door is clamped to the back side of the loop through that little clamp right there. As this door moves that way, the cable is pulling the other door towards it. So they always have the same relationship to one another. So that's, I did that not just so it's neat and you know cool looking that they come together. I did that so that you know they don't both end up over here or uh, you know any other number of configurations. This is the only place that they can land. They can land in their open position and they can land in their closed position. But the pair of them can't move over that way. So there you have it. I think I'm going to be a flat wheel.